there, this is Heather Yeomans and I'm here with Matt Log. And um, this is part of a new show that's coming to uh, Studio City Sound Live's Ustream. And this is the, the grand opening show. And it's entitled The A-List Sessions. And where I come to you with uh, interviews with LA's best A-list session musicians. And Why are they getting here? <laughs> <laughs> and you get to ask the questions. So ask away, and then I'll pass the question on to Matt here. So um, it's nice to see you nice again. Nice to see you, Heather. Wow. I know. Uh, Matt and I actually uh, had the opportunity to work on the same track together. You mm -hmm. played drums on... Um, you wrote it and sang yeah. on it. <laughs> yeah. And we played on it. And um, so that was a great experience. And um, so how long have you been recording at Studio City Sound? Or at Studio City yeah. Sound? Good question. <laughs> I can't, I can't tell you. It's been years. It, it must, so we're, this is 2012 and I think I've known Tom for years. I can't even tell you how long I've known Tom. <laughs> but at Studio City Sound, it's got to be at least seven or eight years. Wow. At least, at the bare minimum. And where did you grow up? I grew up actually both coasts. Oh, I was really? in South... Oh, yeah. <laughs> the voice of God. Right. He's on the phone. <laughs> so, both coasts. Oh. Both coasts. I, I, I grew up in South Carolina. I went through all the schools, you know, elementary and all the way up to high school in South mm -hmm. Carolina. Then when I was 18, I moved to LA. Uh -huh. So I've been here ever since. So kind of grew up both coast there. I know. <coughs> what was the first record you owned? Owned? Yeah. Uh, Yours. <laughs> mine, like, okay, does it count that my mom bought it for me? Because I, I was that sure. young? Okay. We'll count that. Okay. <laughs> I, would, I would say two records. Okay. The, the, originally, the first one was the Batman theme song. <laughs> Batman. And, and then my brother told my mom, go get them the Beatles Magical Mystery Tour. Mm. And so both those records were kind of the same at the same time they were bought for me. And I think my brother did that just because he didn't own Magical Mystery Tour and he needed it in his collection. <laughs> so he said, Mom, go buy Matt Magical Mystery Tour. So yeah. the Batman theme and the Beatles Magical Mystery Tour were my first records. And um, who were your major musical influences as a child besides Batman? Besides <laughs> the Batman. Beatles. And all of his bat music <laughs> dances he was doing. Uh, well, of course, the Beatles, because my brother, my older brother, was turned me on to all the music that I was turned on to when I was a, uh, a kid. So the Beatles. Uh, and then he turned me on to Kiss. Mm -hmm. This is back in... <laughs> Caraman <laughs> likes Kiss. <Yeah. laughs> um, this is in 78, and I was 10 years old. And I was like, whoa, what is this? And, he's, and you know, my brother brought the records home. I was like, who are these guys? And uh -huh. I listened to it. I was like, wow. And uh, so it was Kiss, the Beatles, and that led to bands like Queen and Aerosmith, Rush, and um, stuff like that. Yeah, and who introduced you to the instrument, the drums? Again, my older brother used to have a drum kit. Oh, really? And I was too young to remember this, <clears throat> but my our family album had a picture of this cool drum kit. And um, I was like, whoa, what are those? And he says, well, that was Mark, my brother. Uh, that was Mark's drum kit. And I was like, wow, where is he? He says, well, he, he you know, quit after about a month. So I was like, wow, I want to get a drum kit. And my parents were like, no, no, your brother quit after a month. We don't mm -hmm. want to spend the money and you quit at the same time. And I said, no, I promise. I just feel it. I know this is going to stick. Mm -hmm. So uh, my brother turned me on to uh, to being a drummer, too. And how old were you? At about I think it was time? seven, my first drum kit. Seven, yeah. wow. It was like a little toy drum kit. It wasn't a Muppet Show drum kit, but it was kind of like a Muppet Show drum kit, you know, with the paper heads uh -huh. and little tin shells. <laughs> and it was about this tall. And I was seven. And then I went through that, like, no problem. And then, you know, breaking heads and cymbals and stuff. The cymbal was like a tin, like, little disc like this. <laughs> and that broke. And so, like, the following year for Christmas, I got the Sears catalog professional drum kit. Yeah. And Blue Sparkle. And Blue Sparkle. Yeah. yeah. And so. how did you go about learning? I played along to records, mm -hmm. and then I didn't really have my first instructor till I was about 14, and um, this is back in South Carolina. Uh -huh. And do you know of the country group Alabama? They're, they're like the Beatles of country music, mm -hmm. Alabama. They're huge. Well, the drummer in Alabama, uh, before he joined the group, was living in my, my hometown mm -hmm. in Florence, South Carolina. 
And uh, my mom asked around, does anybody know anybody who can give Matt drum lessons? He goes, yeah, there's this guy who can give you drum lessons. And so it turned out to be Mark Herndon. And so Mark gave me great lessons for about six months, something like that. And then he had to move an hour away to Myrtle Beach, mm -hmm. where this band, Alabama, had this house gig making 50 bucks a night, mm -hmm. you know, for each member. And uh, he had to move to the beach and, and do that. So... Uh, and so he stopped teaching me, and I just kind of took over by myself, just learning from records again. So it was learning from records, and then my friend Mark Herndon uh, gave me great drum lessons. I still use the stuff he, he taught me back in the mm -hmm. day. But he had to move away and become, you know, rich and famous with the band Alabama. And, uh, <laughs> and I went back to learning from Kiss and Beatle records. <laughs> so, like you said, when you were 18, you moved to Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. um, Five years ago. Five <laughs> Um, when was your first professional gig? Oh, well, that was in South Carolina. Yeah, that was before that. And it was also uh, the place where I found out you have to shell shrimp before you eat them. It was at a country club, <laughs> and I made $100. And I was like, whoa, $100. And it was a three-piece band, and the guys were a lot older than me, the guitar player and the bass player. Uh -huh. And uh, I was like maybe 16. And uh, on a break, I walked over to this huge bowl of shrimp. Like and I was like, oh, I'm starving. Oh, I had the shells on and stuff. So, I was like, <laughs> so anyway, so that was my first professional gig and my first like life lesson. Yeah, yeah. Besides <laughs> the shrimp, how did it go? Great. Great. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It wasn't there. Were, it wasn't shaky. It was just you felt like you were in it. Yeah, yeah. I just you know I loved. I've always loved playing drums and making music, so it felt natural. Mm -hmm. And what was your first big break, and how did that come about? Uh, b -b 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 let's see. I'm still looking for it. <laughs> now, um, uh, I guess, well, the the biggest thing so far was I got to play on um, this record with my friend Lance Morrison. It was first, uh, Lance Morrison is a great bass player. Mm -hmm. And this is back in 94, 1994. And um, it was demos for this girl that this uh, big time record producer named Glenn Ballard was, was mm -hmm. producing. And and um, and my friend Lance got me in on the session and we did like three or four songs and we kept doing songs and then I didn't hear from her until her record came out which was Alanis Morissette, Jagged Little Pill. Mm. So um, it was like, bam, it blew up. So I went from, that kind of opened up the door to doing more records and stuff because before that I was doing jingles and demos and, um, and only that. And then that just kind of, you know, as the years uh, went by, they started calling me to do records and stuff. So that was a, my officially my my big break. And what was it like recording? Thank um, you, Alanis. With Alanis Morissette. And Lance. I love Alanis Morissette. What yeah. was it like recording with her? She was great. She um, let you do what what you felt uh, the music needed. And if there was anything she didn't like, she would say something. But she would just both her and Glenn uh, Glenn Ballard were like that. They were like mm -hmm. just just play what you feel. And then there was little tweaks. Like, hey, don't do that. Hey, try that. And but it was, uh, you know, it was my first real experience of like l finding out what letting the musician um, do what he's supposed to do, uh, as opposed to telling the musician what to play. You mm -hmm. get better results when you just let somebody play what they feel, mm -hmm. uh, with, uh, as opposed to like telling them what to play. And so we have Alanis Morissette. I know mm. that you played with Christina Aguilera. Slash, oh, you know. You know, like, <laughs> uh, like the, the list goes on and on. Mm. But if you had to pick, I know it's hard when you have to pick, uh, who would be your favorite artist slash band that you've played for? Oh, that I've, played, that I've worked yeah. with and played for? That's, wow. That's very hard, probably. My, my, yeah. There's a guy that you probably never heard of. He's like... He's like the Beatles of Italy. This guy named Vasco Rossi. Uh -huh. and, I read uh, about him. Yeah, he's insanely huge, and he's his music's great. I don't understand. I'm learning Italian, but I, but I'm <laughs> I don't understand like ninety percent of his lyrics. But I you don't have to because the emotion that it it, it exudes and 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 exudes, is that a word? Anyway, exudes, yes. <laughs> the, the the emotion and the and the crowd response and the band. I love the band, and you know. So anyway, that is probably the best experience I've ever had. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and the Slash thing was great, too. That was, we, um, I think the, the highlight of, the, of that band's moment or career, if you want to call it that, was opening up for ACDC for like a couple of months mm -hmm. on the road. That was just amazing. The, the band, our band, Slash the Snake Pit, was, was the, the peak of its career. And you know, <laughs> then we got to open up for ACDC, who were the nicest guys. And I still 
kind of keep in touch with them. Not really the band, but their techs uh -huh. and stuff. They invite me down to you know to the whatever Staples Center for them mm -hmm. to go see the show, and and I'll go by the dressing room and go, hey guys, I'm like hey, long time, and I'll be like, it's ACDC, they remember me. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and oh, one of those was an international tour. We're both of them. Um, that the ACDC one was just um, in the states, but with Slash, we went to Asia and Europe actually. Yeah, and how do the international tour mm -hmm. tours compare um, to being to working in sessions? These are great questions. Thank yeah. you. You're doing so well. Um, <laughs> you're gonna be very successful. Um, now, how, what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> so basically, how how does international touring um, and being on the road mm -hmm. compare to working as a session musician? Oh, yeah, they're two different animals. But as far as me playing, I consider them to be the same. Mm -hmm. Because there's really no difference. A, a friend of mine told me this years ago, and, and it stuck. There's no difference from the way you play live and then the way you play in the studio. They're mm -hmm. the same. They really are. There's, there's nothing magic about this. It's all about you playing and, and singing. There's no difference between live and in the studio. There shouldn't be anyway. Mm -hmm. So as far as that, there's no difference. But um, touring, you know, it's it's a lot of travel and, you know, to lead up to that one and a half or two hour or hour long show, that's, you know, the reason why you do all the traveling and put up with, you know, getting your luggage lost or, or <laughs> uh, you know, putting up with the bad hotel or whatever. Once you're on stage playing for that hour or two, that's, you know, where it, it all is, um, is, it's the moment in the, on stage is what you do it for, you know. So you have no particular preference? Now, that's a good question too, because um, when you record for somebody like you, that's mm -hmm. forever, right? Yeah, but when you exactly. play live, it's kind of like in the moment, unless somebody's out there with a, a recorder or something like that, or it's being filmed. Uh -huh. But uh, there's the difference. So I think as far as like longevity and, and having something that you can put in your hands and have there for the rest of your life, I prefer the studio. Mm -hmm. yeah. And um, can you describe to me a, a day in a life, basically a typical day for a modern session drummer? Hmm. A lot of waiting for the phone to ring. <laughs> Especially nowadays, man. It's so crazy out there. It's like, it's not what it used to be. And I'm I'm new to this game of session work. I mean, you mm -hmm. talk to guys like the legends that have been in L.A. for, you know, 30 years or 40 years. Like guys like Vinnie Caliuta and, and um, Steve Lukather and all these guys who have, you know, playing all these m massively successful records. It was a different time back then. Mm -hmm. uh, so for me, I've only been doing it since 15 years now. So um, it's, okay, so the day in the life is, is basically things have slowed down. So you just kind of, you wait for the phone to ring. And uh, when the phone rings, they, you, it could be any, there's a lot of different sessions. Mm -hmm. There's like sessions like here at Studio City Sound where they already have a drum kit. And it's just so easy to just walk in and Tom gets great tones and everybody, mm -hmm. it's family here. Yeah. And um, and you just come in, or at least I come in, and I hear your song and I make my chart and then I go get tones, get drum tones with Tom and then we run through the song and then we get you know, feedback from the artist. Mm -hmm. Hey, I love that, no, try this, blah, blah, blah. And bam, you're done. You d then you, you, you team up and you you know, get both ideas together, being the artist and the and the player. And that's, you know, that type of session. Then there's other sessions where it's like the, you know, you have to arrange cartage, which is they send your drums or your instrument, mm -hmm. whatever you're playing, to the studio. And it could be a union date, which is, um, uh, goes to the union, which usually is TV shows or mm -hmm. movies or, or um, uh, records. Um, and it could be live, which means there's, uh, other players, not just yourself mm -hmm. sitting in there. Like today, uh, I played to pre-recorded track, so it was only me. But a live date is when everybody, a live band, a bass player, a drummer, piano player, guitar player, uh, whatever is all in the same room. That's mm -hmm. called a live date. That's a whole different animal. So there's different days in the life <laughs> of a session musician. But it, at the end of the day, it's so much fun. Yeah. It's so much fun because you're creating music. And I, you slightly touched on 
how the session work has really evolved. Mm -hmm. And how do you think session work has evolved over the years with the, the rise and of changing technology in the recording wow. industry? Great question. Yeah, man. Back in the day, you had this machine. I don't even see that. Yeah. It was a two-inch <laughs> machine and two-inch machine. And so uh, that's non-existent now. That's obsolete. We have Pro Tools now. So um, I feel like there are a lot of bands out there that um, really shouldn't have record deals because with technology, you can make anything sound mm -hmm. great. You can move stuff around. You can pitch correct. You could uh, tighten stuff up. It's just, it's, you don't know. It takes the soul out of the music. Mm -hmm. So that is the biggest um, change that I've seen that, uh, you know, with the evolution of technology and, you know, where it's gone these days. So, mm -hmm. And this is kind of uh, building on that. What are your views on the evolving state of the industry, most notably with the Internet wow. and um, the mm -hmm. fading of the traditional system? That's systems? right. Yeah, it's very sad. But you don't need record companies anymore, which for the artist is great. Mm -hmm. But for the working musician, you know, record sessions were usually union. Yeah. And union dates um, are better for a musician because um, you get paid uh, on a... Down the road, you get paid if it gets reused in a movie or if mm -hmm. it gets placed, the song you played on gets placed in a movie, so you get paid again. Or if uh, the song... There's just different scenarios where the union member, musician, mm -hmm. gets paid a couple of different ways down the line as it mm -hmm. goes on. So without a union backing you up, you don't get that. So you, you come to do, to work a studio and you get paid once and that's it. Mm -hmm. Even if you hear the song in a movie, sorry, you know, yeah. you, it's not a union date. And so that's one of the biggest things that's changed and, and I think is really sad. And, you know, actually outside of sessions and stuff like that, we don't see record stores anymore mm -hmm. because of the internet. Bookstores are going down. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's, I mean, the internet is beautiful, but it, it's starting to become uh, uh, a bad thing, actually, <laughs> for a lot of people. So, um, but, you know, a lot of recording studios have gone underwater, you mm -hmm. know, or, or just disappeared because you don't need the big studios anymore you can do a record in somebody's living room now because yeah. with pro tools so anyway so it's a lot there's a lot of good and bad but you t but what you have to do is just roll with it you know you can't do anything about it you just you try to adapt to the change so that's basically what you see in the future just a lot of adaptation totally yeah, yeah. and then um just a, a fun little question mm -hmm. currently right now what is in your cd player or on your itunes list what are you listening to Huh. Well, I haven't had a CD player in a while, so that's gone. <laughs> <laughs> well, iTunes, there's everything. Like just this morning, what was I listening to? The Beatles. Uh huh. And uh, yeah, Beatles. What, what else? I don't know. It's I haven't bought new music in in a long time. Mm -hmm. I really haven't. It's, it's it's a sign that I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> and um. Since you've you've already contributed so much, um, I love this. She, she's got questions here, then she's got them written down on the side, <laughs> and then she's gonna be like this. Oh, you should have seen the first draft. <laughs> wow. Um, you, you've already contributed so much, um, but today, what inspires you to keep on doing what you're doing? Just the love of doing it. Really? Yeah, totally. I mean, you know, you, you just passion and and uh, and it's never uh, like I'm continually continuously I should say <laughs> um, trying to get better at what I do uh -huh. so that's what you know the the love of doing it the fun and I get to make money doing it pay my bills but also it's that continuous feeling of wanting to get better you mm -hmm. know and no sessions the same no live gigs the same there's always some element that makes it different from the last one and uh, that makes it easier makes it harder so it's always a changing um, platform you know yeah. it's like wow what, how do I make this um, how do I sound good in this situation or or um, how do I play my best in this situation mm -hmm. so it's so it's that you know struggle that keeps me going you know? yeah, and the I music is it. always changing too totally yeah. yeah 
And uh, do you have any advice for any young drummers that maybe that may watch this now or in the future? Yeah. Um, I could kid around and go, yeah, quit. You know, I don't want you. I don't want to lose my work. But no, actually, uh, the real. If I was told this when I was seven years old, I would have been really, you know, grateful. And that is, you know, playing a lot of chops and stuff is cool, but it doesn't matter. You have to play to a metronome and get your time and feel together. That's the most important thing. Everything mm -hmm. else really doesn't matter. I mean, it matters to people who read Modern Drummer, which is this drummer magazine, mm -hmm. and, oh, look at that, you know, he's got to transcribe that, that fill that goes <laughs> man. But if you think about in music what's the most successful music out there, it's usually the most simple music, mm -hmm. you know, um, to some degree. Uh, you know, you could think about classical music, which is very um, uh, complicated, but the music that I'm speaking of is more like rock and roll and, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Just for me, personally, my own opinion is just keep it simple and play to a click and play what they say or what they call play the song. And that really means um, just play what the song needs. Mm -hmm. Don't play anything extra or play this fill because you practiced it and you thought it was cool and you need somewhere to place it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not about that. It's playing what's right for the song. And um. This has been a great interview yeah, and thank a you. great uh, grand opening for the show. Oh, this and is the grand opening? Wow. Yeah, I know. There special. <laughs> um, so how can how can everybody watching stay updated with you in special projects? Hmm. Do you have a website? I don't. I'm really lame at that. I just uh, I have a MySpace page, but I don't even do that anymore. Uh -huh. But um, yeah, to keep up with me is is um, I, you know I kind of prefer to be under the radar, but but. Um, the best way, I guess, is to go to my MySpace page, Matt Log. Okay. How do you, was it MySpace, Matt Log, or Matt Log MySpace? I think it's www.myspace.com slash Matt Log. There you go. Um, but great, this has been so much fun. Thank you, Heather. And thank you so much. You're so wonderful. Oh, and likewise. Just amazing. Hope we get to here. work together, you know, soon on one of your new songs. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Bye. Take care, you guys. Tune in next Thursday or uh, the following Thursday after that, and we'll have new players here. Thanks. My curiosity, it's got the best of me. Wanna